Hi, I'm Dr. Elliot Adam from ElliotOracle.com. I'm also the author of the award-winning Fearless Tarot and Tarot in Love, Consulting the Cards and Matters of the Heart. Both books are published by Llewellyn Books, and they're available online wherever books are sold. And also, I have some signed copies on my website, ElliotOracle.com, if you like my approach to tarot. Um, it is time for this week's Oracle Reveal. So yesterday on my social media, I placed up a photo of three different animals, and I asked you to use your intuition and ask yourself which animal's calling to you because that animal has your message. And the three animals were the dog, the horse, and the groundhog. So if you're just joining me now, ask yourself which animal's calling to you because that animal has your message. And so for the first uh, animal, we have the dog spirit, and this card says, Be loyal to what you love. And dog is known for its loyalty. So dog could be really something you're attracted to this next week because you're opening your heart. You might be coming back to something that is part of who you are, the fundamental of who you are. You may be returning to basics, but the main message of the dog is to open your heart up and to love unconditionally, uh, not just your best life, but the people that you are opening to as well. First card for dog is where it's best to place your focus this next week. And we get strength reversed. Now, when strength is upright, it obviously can mean strength, self-control. When it comes up reversed, it can be uh, foretelling a time where you're starting to doubt your strength, where you're starting to feel uh, unsure about the future. Maybe your faith is being tested right now by something that you just can't see the outcome to. You don't know how it's all going to work out. And yet strength is telling you it doesn't matter what comes your way, that you are strong and you're going to be able to respond to whatever comes. This is a time to really get on your own team again and to really believe in what you're able to do. It's also time to wrest control of the lion in your life, the lion being that symbolic thing that feels out of control sometimes. It's time to exert some self-control. And every time I see the strength card, I just think it's so important every day to make three choices that are going to bolster your strength, that are going to reaffirm it, that are going to make you believe that you can handle the thing in front of you instead of just throwing your hands up or avoiding or hiding from the thing. So let's just see how powerful you can be this next week if you pick those three things every day. They could just be small things, but things that are really going to have you walk toward your personal power. Next, we got advice from your inner wisdom for this next week, and we get the Six of Wands. This is a card of confidence, but it's also a card of shining. It's a card of stepping into your excellence. And I just feel for the dog, you need to love yourself enough this next week to be your best self, to be your excellent self. I say it a lot, but the cream always rises to the top. And when you're your best self, you don't have to worry about what's coming up or what might happen because your best self is absolutely equipped and able to handle whatever gets thrown at it. Six of Wands can also indicate that this is a time to promote yourself this next week. It's not a time to be like a shrinking violet and like, oh, no, I'm actually nothing and uh, don't pay any attention to me. Six of Wands is telling you to step confidently into what you know makes you excellent. But I just feel confidence is the name of the game. And also, you know, even with that lion reverse, the, the strength card reversed, it could indicate a time where your confidence feels a little shaky. You might just have to step forward boldly anyway. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you this next week uh, from the Egyptian gods oracle, which I've been using uh, and love, uh, is Hathor. And Hathor is the goddess of love. She's also the goddess of beauty in ancient Egypt. And she's really, again, telling you that theme of love, of really loving your best life, your best self. Hathor is very protective of those that she loves as well. This could also be a time to start to enjoy yourself embody what makes you beautiful, not just on a physical appearance level, but Hathor is really telling you to embrace the beauty within. And don't hold it just to yourself. It might be a time to really let that shine, let other people see it too. But really be confident this next week. Uh, your anxiety is going to evaporate when you step into what makes you shine. 
Next, we're going to go into the horse spirit. And this card says freedom is yours. And horse is definitely that archetype of freedom. It runs free. It's also an archetype of magical assistance. Uh, it can represent that there's an energy uh, that might come through a person or a situation that just lines up for you. But there's this divine intervention uh, if you're attracted to horse that's going to help carry you to your next destination. First card for horse is where it's best for you to place your focus, and we get the ambitious two of wands. Now, ambition in itself is not a bad thing. We see the lord of the manor. He's got everything he could possibly want. He's got a castle and a view, and yet he's not 100% satisfied. He's holding the globe in his hands. He wants the world. He wants even more. And this card can stretch you to go for something better, to level up, to not accept the status quo if you've outgrown it. And it might even feel like you're like a plant that's been in a pot for too long and your roots are starting to bust out. You might need to get replanted in something where there's a little bit more room. Maybe the horse is telling you that it's time to free yourself from something constrictive, something that's not allowing you to grow at this time. However, with the Two of Wands, there's also an insatiable quality to this card. It's sort of like, you know, I'll finally be happy when, uh, you know, I lose that extra five pounds. I'll finally be happy when I make this much money. I'll finally be happy when I get that job or that partner or this thing. And then we're just kind of neglecting what we already have. Imagine how happy this Lord of the Manor would be if he could just sit back and enjoy the manor he has. And so this card can really say that you might need to look around and really be grateful for all the things that you've accumulated, all the things that you've worked for. And yes, there's always room for improvement for all of us, but maybe we need to just accept ourselves. The next card is advice from your inner wisdom this next week. And look at that, we got the Eight of Swords reversed. Uh, this card indicates that you're wriggling out of the old mental traps, old beliefs that are making you feel like you're less than, like you're not worthy of more. These could also be stifling beliefs that you aren't free, that you have to stay stuck in a situation that you've outgrown. And Eight of Swords reversed is saying it's time to let those ropes slide off right now. It's time to take off the blindfold and see who you really are. You are free. You can change the circumstance in front of you. Yes, you might need to be grateful for some of the things you've established, but this card can also say that the past can't hold you anymore. It's time to open yourself up to the world and spread your wings. And the mythic archetype that's going to help you, whoa, look at that. We have Isis, uh, she of 10,000 names, the goddess of goddesses, uh, the ancient mother goddess too. But Isis is also an archetype of magic. Isis knows all the magic words, and she knows that to speak something is to bring it into reality. And so this is an important week for you if you pick the horse to really monitor what messages you're sending. What are the messages you're telling yourself about yourself and what you can accomplish and what can you do? Maybe it's time to do some affirmation work and really say what you're worthy of. Speak into existence that which you want to see in, uh, happen in your life. Isis, the goddess of magic, is absolutely guiding her hand on you, and you're under her protective wings. And then finally, we have the groundhog spirit, and this card says time to let go. And Groundhog, we all know about Groundhog's Day. There is that archetype of it's time to let go of the winter. It's time to let go of uh, the cold period, the, the time that's barren in our life. And it's also time to open up to the new spring, the new beginning. First card for Groundhog is where it's best for you to place this focus, your focus this next week. And we get the Nine of Pentacles. This has long been called the Wealth Card. But for me, you know, not only is this a good time to focus on money, jobs, you know, uh, security, but for me, pentacles, they're not just about money. It's not just about, uh, you know, something that shallow. Nine of pentacles is about your sense of worth, your sense of worthiness, accepting nothing but the best in your life, having the impeccable standard and not really tolerating anything that doesn't meet that standard. So I just feel like this week, it's time to focus on the best for yourself. It's time to really raise the bar, level up. It's also a time to be patient with what you're manifesting at this time. Hidden in the bottom of the Nine of Pentacles card, it's kind of hard to see, but at, at the base of her dress is that little snail, and sl snails can move very slowly. And also the woman, she's holding uh, the falcon, which is normally known for its speed. It can go after its quarry uh, so swiftly, and yet she's restraining it. 
She's coiling that energy. She's holding it back until it's the ready time to make the move. And so I too feel with this card for you that there is something that you're improving in yourself, in your environment. It's time to really hold a high standard. The next card is your advice from your inner wisdom. And how interesting, another pentacles card, and not just another pentacles card, but the opposite meaning of the nine of pentacles. What do we do with this? We got the wealth card next to what's been called the poverty card. And for you, I feel this next week for the groundhog that you're at a fork in the road. You really have a choice about what you're going to invest your energy in. There's two paths in front of you, and the path you invest in is going to dictate where your next steps are going to go. You can either invest in your best, you can invest in the best standard of your living, or you can invest in the thing that seems to take more energy than it gives you. Five of Pentacles warns you of the energy wasters in your life. This can come in the form of like psychic vampire people who are just draining your energy. You get off the phone with them or you're done interacting with them and you're just exhausted. Uh, or this could also just be attitudes, beliefs uh, that are keeping you feeling like you're on the outside of the church. You don't have a place where you belong in there. It's all an illusion. These are really strong cards that have to do with your worth this next week. And I feel like what you step into, what you declare about yourself, is really telling others what you really think you're worth as well. So put in the extra effort this next week. Put in the extra effort to make yourself shine, to be your best self, to step into your light, and stop uh, you know, pouring energy or resources into the thing that drains you, that impoverishes your energy, that takes more than it gives. And then finally, we got the mythic archetype that's going to help you this next week. And we see Mertzsaker. Uh, she's the cobra goddess in ancient Egypt. She's a little lesser known, uh, but she's called the one, uh, she's she who loves silence. So Mertzsaker could say that this is a time to get quiet. Also, the snake sheds its skin for a new reality. This is an ancient goddess who is a protective uh, goddess. She's protective of artisans, of people who are creating something new in their life. And I feel like this is a time for you to really get quiet and get back in touch with your true worth, what you're really worthy of. It's time to raise your standard. And it might also be a time to detox, to step away from that energy that feels, again, that it's draining. And that is this week's Oracle. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you do like my readings and my approach to tarot, you're absolutely going to love my books. And I also want to let you know that I'm going to be in New York City at the end of this month of April at Reader Studio in New York. Uh, there's a lot of information online uh, about Reader Studio, and I'd love to see you there. I'm also going to be leading a workshop called Rise of the Phoenix, uh, Transforming Fear into Personal Power with the Tarot. So I hope to see you there. Um, there are are still tickets available last time I checked. Um, also, if you, finds, uh, if you find this uh, video useful, please do like, share, and subscribe it. Uh, otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you again here next time, so do take care.